Topic three, retained earnings. Retained earnings captures accumulated net income or loss, as well as the correction of accounting errors and retrospective accounting policy changes. This can have a debit balance if losses over time exceed income. We increase retained earnings by crediting it for net income, and we decrease it for a number of items, which can include cash and stock dividends, share issuance costs, share retirement, adjustments related to complex financial instruments, and accounting error correction and retrospective changes in policy. This also could result in a credit, should be noted. There are both formal and informal limitations for the portion of accumulated earnings to show which part of retained earnings is not available for dividends to shareholders. Appropriated retained earnings arise from management decisions, so this may be something to set aside to cover future expected losses. Restricted retained earnings may arise from contracts or law, so for example, part of a debt covenant. There is no actual segregation of assets. This simply moves part of the retained earnings balance into a different account, but it's still within under the retained earnings umbrella and which sits under our shareholders' equity umbrella. These appropriations and restrictions are relatively uncommon, so we're not going to spend any more time on this. Let's look at a question. Which of the following would result in an increase to retained earnings? Restricting part of the balance to meet a contractual obligation. B. Correcting a prior year accounting error that results in a decreased prior year income. C. Issuing common shares. D. Recording a retrospective change in accounting policy that decreases prior year expense. Now, I'm going to give you a hint here before I give you a moment to think about it. For each one of these, I would suggest writing out the journal entry. And if you understand which one, um, if you understand the journal entries for each, if you understand how each would conceptually um, affect the income statement, then you can just simply pick out the one which would be an increase to retained earnings. And hint, hint, because this is an equity account, an increase to retained earnings, that would be the credit to retained earnings. I'll give you a moment. If you said D, recording a retrospective change in accounting policy that decreases prior year expense, that would be correct. So if we're decreasing a prior year expense, that means we are actually effectively increasing that prior year's income. So if we had understated last year's, or pardon me, a prior year's income, that would actually be an increase to our retained earnings this year, which would be a credit to our retained earnings. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next.